Good day, students. I am Miss Nina Dibusidi, your teacher for today. And now, we are at quarter three, week four of Science 5, which is the condition of the environment before, during, and after the typhoon. So, at the end of the lesson, the students will be able to observe the changes of the weather before, during, and after the typhoon. Next, describe the effects of winds given a certain storm warning signal. And the last, describe the effects of a typhoon in the community. Before we go on to our lesson, let's have a short review of our lessons last week. So what, what are you going to do is to identify the following tropical cyclones according to the strength of winds. Okay, are you ready? Okay, let's start. Number one. It is characterized by a poorly developed wind circulation. So what is that, that tropical cyclones? Okay, very good. That is tropical disturbance. It is an intense tropical cyclone with maximum wind speed of 118 to 220 km per hour. What is it? Okay, very good. That is typhoon. Next one. It is a weak, low-pressure disturbance with a definite surface circulation. Okay, very good. That is tropical, tropical depression. Next, or the last one we have, it is a moderate tropical cyclone with maximum wind speed of 62 to 88 kilometer per hour. So what is it? Okay, very good. That is a tropical storm. Okay, so now that we already mastered our lesson next week, let's now move on to our new topic for today. So first, let's have a short activity. All you have to do is to describe the picture that I will that I will present and then you're going to describe it based on your observation. Okay, so let's start. First picture. What can you say about in this picture? Okay, very good. So the sky is cloudy. So there is a heavy rain that result to flash plants. Next. There are some uprooted trees. How about in the next one? We have a strong winds and the next one there is a landslide so how about so what can you say in this picture so the sky is clear and there is a flash flood so how about in this picture or the last picture okay very good so the houses are Severely destroyed. So to know the connections of those pictures in our topic for today, let's now move to our lesson. Which is the conditions of the environment before, during, and after the typhoon.
So, how do we know if it is going to rain? Okay, very good. By looking at the sky. Now, look at the sky. So, what can you say about it? Okay, very good. So, the sky is clear and the sun is visible. So, are we going to have a sunny or rainy day? Okay, so we will have a sunny day. Let's tackle the condition of the environment before the typhoon. First, high clouds are observed in the sky. The air is dry and cold since most of the warm air has already risen. Next, the wind blows gently and scattered rain showers may occur. How about the conditions of the environment during a typhoon? The sky is dark and cloudy. Next, heavy rainfall accompanied by strong winds occurs. Okay, next, big waves are also observed near the coast. Storm surge occurs. So, that is the conditions of the environment during the typhoon. Flash floods may occur due to heavy rainfall. And the next one. Landslides may be triggered by flash floods, flash floods, and heavy rains. Okay, and the last one. Some trees and crops may be uprooted because of strong winds. Okay, now let's move on to the condition of the environment after the typhoon. The sun becomes visible and the sky becomes clearer. Next, some areas may still be flooded and recovering from typhoon. There might be a scattered rain showers. If a certain place is severely devastated, many residents are, are staying in evacuation areas. Now that we're done with the condition of the environment before, during, and after a typhoon, now let's move on to the public storm warning signals. In order to determine the strength of a typhoon, the Philippine Atmospheric Geophysical and Astronomical Service Administration or the PAGASA issues public storm warning signals. So let's start with that. Public, public storm warning signal number one. Winds moving at a speed of 30 to 60 km per hour may be expected in at least 36 hours or irregu irregular rains may be expected within 16, 36 hours. Next, when the tropical cyclone develops very close to the locality, a shorter lead time of the occurrence of the winds will be specified in the warning bulletin. Unless this warning signal is upgraded during the entire existence of the tropical cyclone, only very light or no damage at all may be sustained by the exposed communities. Next, we have this public storm warning signal number two. 
winds moving at a speed of 61 to 120 km per hour may be expected in at least 24 hours. The wind may bring light to moderate damage to the affected communities. Next, we have the public storm warning signal number 3. Winds moving at a speed of 121 to 170 km per hour may be expected at least 18 hours. Moderate to heavy damage may be experienced particularly in the agriculture and industrial sectors. Next, we have the public storm warning signal number 4. Winds moving at a speed of 171 to 220 km per hour may be expected in at least 12 hours. The, the locality is very likely to hit directly by the eye of the typhoon. Next, as the eye of the typhoon approaches, the weather will continuously worsen with the winds increasing to increasing to its strongest coming coming generally from the north. And the last one, we have the public storm warning signal number 5. So in public storm warning signal number 5, winds moving at a speed of 220 km per hour or above may be expected in at least 12 hours. Winds would, be, would bring widespread damage to high-risk structures. Let's have an activity. We're going to analyze each statement, draw a heart eyes emoji if it is true and wow emoji if it is false. I will give you two minutes to answer this activity. Okay, so you may start now. Last 10 seconds. Now, let's check your answer. Number 1. Public storm warning signal number 1 is characterized by winds moving at a speed of 220 km per hour or above may be expected in at least 12 hours. Winds would bring widespread damage to high-risk structures. So the answer is false. Number two, 
after a typhoon occurred, high clouds are observed in the sky. Is it a true or false? That is false. Very good. Number three. Public storm signal number three is characterized by winds moving at a speed of 121 to 170 km per hour. May be expected at at least 18 hours. In general, moderate to heavy damage may be experienced mm -hmm. Particularly in the agricultural and industrial sectors. So the answer is true. Next, number four. Tropical disturbance is a weak low pressure disturbance with a definite surface circulation. So that statement is false. Very good. Number five. Tropical depression is an intense weather disturbance having more or less circular shape with an average size of about 500 kilometers in diameter. So the answer is false. Very good. Now, let's have a short activity again. You will do it in your notebook. So inside the column, Analyze the following statements that describe the changes of the weather before, during, and after the typhoon. Put a check mark on the column that corresponds to the condition of each statement. I'll give you another two minutes to answer this question or this activity. Okay? So, you may start now. Okay, finish. So let's check your answer. Okay, number one. Some areas may be flooded. So it, this condition happens before, during, or after the typhoon. Okay, so the correct answer is after the typhoon. Next, number two, there is a heavy rain accompanied by a strong wind. So that is during the typhoon. Number three, sun becomes visible and the sky becomes clearer. That is after the typhoon. Number four, the sky is dark and cloudy. So that happens before the typhoon. Number five, the clouds are high. The answer is before the typhoon. Six, some areas may still be flooded. So that is after the typhoon. Seven, flash floods may occur due to heavy rainfall. Yes, that is during the typhoon. Next, number eight, the relative humidity is high. So that is before the typhoon. Number nine, big waves can be observed near the coast. The answer is during the typhoon. Last, number ten, there is an occurrence of scattered rain. So that happens after the typhoon. that you already mastered our lesson for today based on the results of your activities or two activities, I will ask you a question. Considering that there is a typhoon that will fall in your province, what preparations you are going to do? Okay, very good. So you will prepare a go bag wherein it contains water, food, 
some clothes, batteries, flashlights, radios that you may use in evacuation areas. Okay, very good. So now, let's have a short quiz. Match the definition in column A with a concept in column B. Write the letter of the, your answer on the space provided before each number. I will give you one minute to answer this. So, are you through? Okay, let's answer. Number one. It is a moderate tropical cyclone with maximum wind speed wind speed of 62 to 88 kilometer per hour. So, the answer is letter D. That is a tropical storm. Number two. It is characterized by winds moving at a speed of 61 to 120 kilometer per hour may be expected in at least 24 hours. So the answer is letter B, public storm warning signal number 2. Next, number 3, it can result to weather disturbances such as rains and strong winds. That is tropical depression. Number 4, it is a weather condition being observed after a typhoon. That is letter F. The sun becomes visible. Number five. It is a government agency that keeps track of cyclones that enter, enter the port. That is the Pag-asa. So for your assignment, use a Venn diagram to compare and contrast the effects of the changes of the weather before, during, and after a typhoon in the community. Thank you for listening. Hope you really understand our lesson for the day.